I'm Dave Hodgson. I'm the president of the Scotts Valley Senior Life Association. We have our little table in the back there. There's some brochures about uh, senior life. Uh, for those of you who don't know about us, the brochures look like this. And uh, we are a 501c3 nonprofit association. Uh, and of course, we live on donations. So, one of the nice things about it is everybody's a volunteer. And we have virtually no expenses other than the grants that we make for beneficial things. Um, an example is the defibrillator in the back of the room at ADD uh, was donated to Mono Valley by the uh, Senior Life Association. I see one of our board members over here, Dave Bengston. He's our treasurer. Dave, wave your hand. Very good. Uh, George Haas is one of our board members. Let's see. Where? Who am I missing? Okay. Terrence is here. It's probably somebody else that I haven't Terrence, seen. Terrence is the there he is, right back there. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hiding out in the back. All right. He's president. <laughs> very, very good. Uh, so, anyway, welcome everybody. Uh, the person in charge today is uh, our mayor, Randy. Randy Johnson, you may remember for a number of things he's accomplished around the community. Probably the most notable one is Scotts Valley Drive. Um, and if you've been around here for a while, you remember what it looked like uh, 10 years ago and how much nicer it is today. And uh, Randy got an itch, I think, and just pulled on that to get it going. Anyway, thank you again for being here. And let me turn the meeting over to our mayor, Randy Johnson. Uh, I appreciate the uh, term being in charge. I'm not really that way at my home, so it's great to know that uh, it's that way here. Um, before I get started, just wanted to introduce a few of the folks uh, that are uh, uh, in attendance. You know, if we have our city council here. Uh, Vice Mayor Jim Reed is here. Welcome, Jim. <laughs> council Member Donald Lynn, our past mayor. Also, uh, I lost power here. So, 552 Bean Creek. You know what a great place. You know for the for many many years, I've I've known uh, people who have lived here. Uh, it's kind of been an inspiration, I think, for our city. It's it's like when things get tough. I I think some of us uh, on the city council say, "What would Mono Valley do?" You know, and. Um, <laughs> Because it's such a it's such a safe place, it's such an involved place. Uh, you you know what's happening. Um, you kind of uh, uh, know the issues, and that's so that's so refreshing in a in a city that where people uh, you know come alive, ask questions, uh, kind of keep us on our toes. I, you know, I was at a uh, eatery last night, and a person who was actually a friend. Uh, you know, talk to me, ask me some questions. Uh, some of them were relatively tough questions. And then he texted me uh, a couple hours later, say, listen, Randy, I'm really sorry, blah, blah, blah. He said, don't be sorry. That's what we're here for. We're here to answer questions. We're here to be uh, responsible for our actions. And, uh, and um, I just want to thank uh, everybody here for the invitation. Thank you, Dave. I also will get a chance to, to, to meet some of the other players in our uh, city. Um, our city manager, Jenny Hariyama, is here. I think she's been a great addition to the city. And um, Pat Harmon is here too from the from the water district. I don't know why you're not up here. You need some tough questions, just like the rest of us. So you know, this is the state of the city. Um, I think uh, the state of the city is good. Um, but as we go through this process, we want to, we'll probably look a little bit about the, about the past, the present, I think more importantly about the future. Where is our city headed? And, you know, I think as a city we have a lot to look forward to. Um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's beautiful, we have a vibrant future. I think we're the most dynamic city in the whole county because lots and lots and lots of things are happening here. Um, Scotts Valley is... Uh, you know, it has a small town character. If you look at the some of the parks that we have in our city, uh, how many of you get a chance? I know it's relatively close, but how many of you get a chance to actually go and use Sky Park as as an entity? Yeah, isn't that great? Um, and that was, I think, in our thoughts uh, when we we improved it. 
You know, when I first got on the city council, it was completely bare. There were no fields. There was no. There were no um, um, play structures. There was no facility there. Um, and I've often mentioned to uh, present um, city managers uh, and, and past that if we can make our bathrooms look as good as uh, you have here in uh, Montreal, <laughs> because believe it or not, the bathroom there, you know, there was sometimes you can't um, cheapen things, and so there was a call uh, way back when. Well, why don't we just have porta potties in our park at Sky Park? And I said no. We're not going to do that. So we paid $150,000. We have uh, a beautiful uh, restroom. I, I don't know why I'm talking about all the potty talk here, but, uh, <laughs> but for young mothers and people who have to change diapers and everything, it's so important. So I'm really glad to, that you're able to um, have a chance to come to Sky Park. Uh, a few years ago, we instituted the farmer's market. Anybody get a chance to go there? Oh, yeah. yeah. It's a beautiful thing. It took many, many years for, again, like lots of things happen. It took many, many years for us to kindly settle on a place, make an agreement with, with the, with the uh, proper agricultural authorities, and it's worked out great. Uh, it stood the test of time. I think it's going on its seventh, eighth, or ninth year now. Um, and I, would, I think it's even, you know, here in November, it might be its last week or so, but it's, it's there. So it's a, it's a beautiful thing. Sky Park, of course, is the home of fireworks. It's the home of, uh, of music in the our music in the park. We have films there. Uh, the closest thing to uh, I, I guess I'd give away a little bit of my age too. The closest thing to drive-in theaters that we have around here. <laughs> it's so it's it's great. It's a great gathering place. You know, I think for our city council. For us to be able to have fireworks, parades, and all those things brings our community together. And having a community is just so important. It's, it's, you, you feel that here. You have good leadership, but you feel the community of Montevallo, don't you? Of how important it is. I mean, you're here. It's a great attendance that we're seeing right here. And that's what we strive for, really, in Scotts Valley, of, of having the, that close-knit community. Um, and of course, we're going to continue to make investments in our city. Um, we have a, a, a great library. Uh, well, I think we're going to quality schools right now. Okay, that's my fault. Um, 1941 was was when the middle school was yes. built. Okay, um, 1941 is a long time ago. Okay? <laughs> and um, so, just this year, I think uh, after. Th two or three years of delay, mostly because of that darn beetle, you know, that little thing that flies around here. Uh, the June beetle, it's respected, but at the same time, it did hold up the, the, the construction for a few years. And I'm so happy. Have, have you had a chance to go at least drive? Well, you drive the beetle, it's right there. You get to drive by it all the time. And um, it's making real progress. And so I think, if I, if I hear the school district correctly, I think right around a year from now, uh, our students will be able to go into a completely renovated, beautiful middle school. And that's such an important thing because part of what, you know, keeps, you know, that I think makes for a great community are great schools. Mm -hmm. You know, as you probably know, we're, the city is separate from school districts, it's separate from fire districts, it's separate, separate from water districts. They all have their own boards. But, you know, I have to say, and I've mentioned this before, that the leadership and all of those things that I just mentioned, from, from both Steve's up here and Brad, uh, Tanya, who's not here right now with the school district, we have a really good leadership. I don't know if they say the same thing about the city, but uh, we have outstanding leadership. And that's so important for us to, us to you know, follow our dreams and make things happen for the future. So I'm really excited about the middle school. Um, you know, my kids, all my kids went there, they played sports there. The teachers were great, but the facilities were, were, were really uh, abdominal. I said abdominal. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we're going to continue to make upgrades to our city. You know, um, aside from the schools here, I mentioned Sky Park. Close to Sky Park is a beautiful library. Again, I would assume yeah. if you're going to Sky Park, you get a chance to go to the library. And we, uh, apparently this week we had some, uh, I was, I was, there was a, a football game last night, but I, I understand there were activities at the library uh, for the full week, and uh, we have, so, again, 
that's something that you know uh, our city council we looked at the possibilities there we have the nicest library in the whole system okay it's beautiful it was done I think probably at a fraction of what the other libraries are coming in at I think ours I think total was six seven million dollars the other ones are coming in at 12 13 million dollars so it's kind of the theme that Scotts Valley does of doing more with less okay we hate it when it's the other way where we do less with more so we're trying to keep you know on task in terms because we're always you know it's no fault of anybody in our community but our system our tax system is is built in such a way that our property tax makes it very difficult for us to have an ongoing reliable source of income for, for our city it's a prop 13 thing i'm not going to get into the details but fortunately or unfortunately, I guess I should say, uh, probably five years ago, we were for every hundred dollars that was collected in property tax, the city got three dollars fifty cents. Not good. Okay, when other cities are getting fifteen or, or fifteen or twenty dollars per per hundred. So what did we do? We talked to the county. We tried to be reasonable. They resisted. We finally had to sue, and we won that lawsuit. And, and you know, Jim and Donna were involved in that. And it was a big thing for us because now we get closer to seven dollars per hundred, and that's how we do the services that we have in our city, which we rely on, and that's what we're here for. Library, uh, uh, the facility upgrades. Oh yes, I mentioned the bathroom before again, um, <laughs> both at Silton and also at uh, Sky Park. Um, you know, it's important thing. I mean, it's, sometimes it's, it's you know, you, you consider it kind of be a small uh, issue, but now uh, in the, past, the, the city council decided that we're going to actually invest in some of the things that are important to people's lives. Again, it may not seem important, but if you're a mother who has to change diapers or have to use the restrooms, that's that's the new, that, that's what they look like now, both at Silton Inn and also at Sky Park. So we're happy about that. And that represents the senior center on the left there with some upgrades that have been uh, uh, budgeted um, and we're happy about that as well. The, the sign on the right for, you know, um, that is the Triangle Park as you, as you come down off the freeway entering Scotts Valley on Highway 17 down off the hill. Uh, it's a, it's a, we uh, repainted that, made it look good. That cool triangle park is really a little gem. Not many people uh, know about it, but it's right across from Vine Hill School. And lots of people, you know, uh, like to sit there, relax, uh, walk their dogs through there. There's a little skateboarding that goes on, but we try and ignore that, right, Chief? Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> um, finances. Again, you come from a, you know, you're in good hands with your leadership here and finances are a big part of it. Uh, I know we have a couple of ex-CPAs in the audience, so I have to be careful here, right, Bob? Okay. So, you know, I think, you know, the city has always been, I think, pretty frugal with its finances. Um, as you see there, uh, how, we get, how we get a lot of our revenue, property tax, uh, embedded in there is a, is a thing called Measure U, which is a half cent sales tax that uh, I think many of you were uh, we were fortunate enough to have your support when we did an extra half cent sales tax to augment the shortfalls that we have in our city as far as revenue is concerned. There are fees. Uh, sales tax is a big part of our, our future. I don't want to forget TOT tax because TOT represents the hotels that are uh, here in Scotts Valley. Um, we have two right now, but uh, two are, and three are, are coming on board. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that later. But part of that is, is, is if you look at how many you see on, on, on Scotts Valley Drive, the uh, what they call the Sand Hotel or Lexington, it's going to be 129 rooms. Uh, multi, uh, the 1440 Multiversity is uh, the old Bethany campus, where a um, person came to us three, three years ago. Uh, he and his wife had kind of uh, a, a vision, epiphany, if you will. Uh, uh, 1440 represents the number of minutes in a day, and she, uh, he and she were uh, determined to make the most use out of every minute in a day, and so therefore the name of the multiversity of 1440. Hold on, I have a, I'm going to pass these around.
So the multiversity is, like <clears throat> as mentioned, is up on the Bethany campus. Uh, Scott Cranes came uh, with his wife Joni. They uh, explored it. They said, this, is, this may be a place where we want to, to build a multiversity that deals with uh, uh, interpersonal relationships and leadership and uh, people uh, getting in touch with their feelings. Um, he put in, I don't think it's proprietary, uh, over $60 million, I believe, right, to rebuild that campus. And uh, it's a beautiful place. It's at the very end of Bethany Drive. I would encourage you just to drive up there. It, it looks like uh, something out of Tahoe with the beautiful architecture and so forth. Um, and that's kind of an older um, catalog, but they have a new one out. And he's made it available for people who want to attend some of those classes. So uh, please uh, look at that opportunity. It's online, 1440.org, I believe. Um, the nice thing is, uh, again, looking at, uh, at, at hotels, even 1440, TOT tax, hotels, TOT tax, transit occupancy tax. Most of you stayed in hotels, I know this. And you know the $159 that you see, well, then you have to kind of look at the bottom of the page, okay? <laughs> and there's a thing called the TOT tax, which is the extra 10%, okay? So, for every time somebody stays in a hotel and pays $159, we get $15.90. It's huge, okay? And I'm happy to say that even, even though multi, the multiversity is a great place, it's going to kind of put Scotts Valley on the map to a certain degree. They also pay TOT. So when they... When they uh, they have a broad spectrum. They make it very, very reasonable for people, sometimes as low as 60 or 70, 80 dollars a day, and up to 350. But every time somebody stays in that 350 dollar room, we get 35 dollars in the city. So we're excited about that. Okay. So, town center taking shape. Um, is there a reverberation in here? Uh, keep it shape, 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 shape. Because you've heard it before, right? Um, it's, uh, okay. So, we think, and especially for the people in this room, that the town center will be an extremely important addition to our city. And on the right hand side there, you can see one of the first steps. Um, kind of a catalyst, we're hoping. Uh, that represents a, a, a restaurant that has not actually come before the city council yet, but it represents plans for a restaurant, uh, uh, kind of a, a, a brew pub without the brew part, uh, people to be able to come to the town center portion of this. Does everybody know where it's the suburban site was? Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. So a few years ago, we decided at the city council, we're going to get rid of those because we felt that they were something of a danger and also they were a huge impediment to the future of that town center. So they went away. Uh, the, the last remnants were really that building and um, it was leveled about three weeks ago. And in its place, is a, it's, it's both, it will be a, as, as long as we agree as a city, and I would encourage you to come to some of those um, uh, deliberations, of a restaurant, a group pub, and ability to kind of get together. It's so important for people to kind of come together and have experiences, and Town Center represents that. We want it to be a place to go to and enjoy. And a lot of that revolves around the ability to have a restaurant, coffee shops, ice cream places, um, some um, shopping where you can do buy, actually buy, buy a shirt. I, I, I didn't wear a college shirt today because you can't buy one in Scotts Valley. So, um, but we hope to we we hope to be able to do that. Okay, that's part of our dream is to have a town center. Uh, some of it will involve housing. Some of it will involve uh, retail. Some of it will involve office. But that is uh, just kind of the the the, the brew that we're we're trying to build here. And I have to say that um, you know we did have a, a developer that fell out. Right? About three months ago, he looked at it. And part of the problem is, is we just don't, you know, for, for developers are funny, they're risk averse. They don't want to put in 50, 40, 50, 60 million dollars in something um, without a reasonable uh, rate of return. Okay, it's just the way it is. And that's one of the reasons why nothing's built there right now. Uh, we have 12,000 people in Scotts Valley. The surrounding area kind of directly uh, brings it up maybe to 16, 18,000. Uh, every time I go to a, a, a conference, 
trying to get people interested in our city, we have to mention places like San Lorenzo Valley. San Lorenzo Valley creates traffic on Mount Hermon, you've all seen it. It's a, yeah. But it's a two-edged sword too because it, that impact also means that restaurants stay in business and we get sales tax from the people that don't want to shop in Felton at their Safeway, they want to shop at ours. Believe me, there's a more than you think that want to shop in a clean, well-lighted place who want to come to our libraries and things like that. So um, we encourage uh, developers to, to, to look at that, recognize that there's a, there's, we have a captive audience at San Lorenzo Valley. I don't know if it's 25, 35,000, something like that. They all come through Scotts Valley, um, and that's going to be one of the things that is enticing to developers that say, hey, this is, this is part of the, the uh, audience that will come and use our, our um, town center. Again, we, we're, uh, Vice Mayor Reed and I are going to explore the, the works of three interested developers. We're going to do a tour of some of their work. And we think, again, I, I don't want to say I'm, I'm very cautious about being too optimistic, but I think there's a good chance among these three that we might have somebody who's truly interested in doing something. And when you throw in the anger, um, it's a very good start. Lots going on on both, both ends of the city. Uh, this represents the junction at Stock, uh, Stocks Valley Junction, Stocks Valley Market. You all know where that is. They have taquerias, they have sushi, they have the market there, of course. Um, again, I was in uh, one of those uh, eateries last night and it was really hopping. It was fantastic to see uh, just a variety of people, all the way from, from, uh, from people like myself, uh, couples getting together. There must have been four or five families that brought their six and eight year old kids to eat. They were playing outside. Um, it's a fantastic thing for, for people to be able to have that experience of being able, and that's what we're so hopeful about the town center. So you can have that same experience and, and on this end of town. Um, um, we also have Kaiser Permanente. Kaiser Permanente has 20,000 feet that they, they've taken uh, right at the Granite uh, Creek um, intersection there. Everybody you know, kind of know where that is? How many people actually use Kaiser? Yeah. Yeah. Kaiser, uh, if, you, if you look at some of the um, data, uh, has come in relatively cheaper, I think, than, than uh, some of the other um, opportunities, such as uh, uh, Blue Shield and Blue Cross. So it's a good addition. We are trying to work on that on their um, availability for Medicare. I think this year they're not a part of that uh, yet. But, um, we're going to have discussions, I think, to, to kind of work on that. Um, also, the University of San... Uh, did I say University of Santa Clara? I didn't mean that. University of California at Santa Cruz, UCSC. Um, at the old Borland building, the Enterprise building right there, that, that beautiful but um, kind of large thing right off the freeway, um, is um, houses now close to 400 employees um, at Kaiser. And, or, I'm sorry, at the old, old building. So, that is, a, that is an important thing for us because, again, we live in a community that we have to have jobs in our community. We have to have the ability of, 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 of the, um, a texture and, and um, where, where, where people can work, they can live. Uh, they, those are the ones that use our uh, restaurants in the middle at, at lunch and so forth. So, you know, having that tapestry uh, is so important. Um, I don't think, you know, there's some discussion that this would lead to some to a certain amount of, um, you know, heavy, heavy traffic and, and so forth. I don't think it's quite worked out that way. Uh, and it's turned out to be a good addition for us, for, for uh, business uh, in general. So it's, it's a good uh, place to be as far as we're concerned in the city. What are some of our uh, future focuses that we're trying to do? Um, as a community, uh, we've been going through a general plan update. A general plan update is uh, the ability for people in our community to kind of focus on the direction. Remember before I talked about the future of our city? This is an opportunity for anybody who, who wishes to focus on that. You can do it for a very, through a very formal process. Um, we get together, we have meetings about every 
month or six weeks, I think it's a 18, 16 or 18 month process, where we talk about you know, what's important for our city, what direction do we want to go. Um, and we've had some really, really good discussions among community members, uh, you know, representatives from our full community, or they're from the school district, from, uh, the, uh, of course, the city, Jim Reed, uh, uh, Vice Mayor Reed is part of that discussion. We have about oh, eight or nine, ten um, members of that. We get a good introduction from the community to talk about that. So it's, uh, it's, it's, it's what we're doing right now to kind of ensure that the future of our city is, is impacted by what, what people like you have to say. And I know the Montevallee people are engaged and we encourage you to show up in those meetings. So go on our website because uh, one of the great additions that um, Jenny has done, it, um, Jenny Haruyama, um, is our social media is a little bit more expanded. It's an ability to uh, kind of stay in touch with our city. Our, um, oh, thanks. Our city uh, wants to do that through um, uh, social media and, and our website, but also through the newspaper. The, the banner is uh, always available to, to uh, keep you uh, informed. Um, so we've also talked about, a little bit about the investment that the city's doing in uh, the town center. A big part of that, and, and in some ways a new paradigm, is that housing is a part of our future. Um, you know, I just got a, um, and it was, it was almost, um, not really heartbreaking, but it was one of those emails that you get where a person who is a single mom, she has a couple of kids, she's a nurse, you know, and I don't know what nurses make, but a lot of times it's, you know, north of uh, 90, 100,000. She just lost her lease because it got sold, uh, her, you know, some circumstances, and she can't find a place to live, okay? Now, part of that, you know, is like, well, why didn't you buy a house, or why didn't you do this, and why didn't you do that? We have to have a place for people so they can live. Uh, we have to, it has to be affordable. Sometimes it's through a uh, formal affordable housing component that the city does and mandate there, but also, as a city and as a county, really, we have to have the ability to have housing for people who are teachers, people who are firefighters and police officers, people who are just trying to make their way in this world but need a place to live. People who are children and grandchildren, all of you know, right? And who has in the ear said, well, I, uh, I don't know how my kids or grandkids are going to find a place here in the city, okay? And, there they are, off to Modesto or something, you know? We can't do that. So there is going to be an emphasis, I think, on, um, I think, smaller units. I think apartments. Uh, I think uh, senior housing. Those are uh, some, of the, some of the plans that are coming through um, for consideration through our planning department. And we're going to be, you know, vigilant, but at the same time open to those types of possibilities because that's what we do as a city. Remember I mentioned tapestry? Okay, all sorts of things make a great community. But we have to have the ability to, for housing, we have to have the ability for people to come and live here, to work here, not to always have to go over the hill, and so forth. So that's going to be part of it. Um, water usage. Again, I'm uh, here speaking of water. Right? <laughs> It's always a good governor. If I get too thirsty, it means I'm talking too much. So if that happens, just uh, raise your hand. I think I'm almost there. Um, but again, I just, um, if we back up just a little bit, if we talk about housing, I did want to talk to a little bit about uh, what's going on. At the north end of, the, of our city is, um, you know, Polo Ranch, 40 homes that are going where the old um, um, Santa, Santa's Village was. Yeah. Um, those are going to be probably the higher level homes, okay? Um, but they're preserving probably 150 acres, and so it will it'll be a nice addition. Another thing is going to be the Grove, which is right next to um, Enterprise Building or the Borland Building. Those are going to be 50 either townhomes or small units that you see over here on Blue Bonnet. 
uh, smaller, um, but more affordable. And, and that's what developers are telling us. I have to tell you, you know, the price of housing and what's driving it, as we probably well know, is what's going on over the hill, right? My parents have had, in, in, in Santa Clara, they had a, a three-bedroom, 1,300-square-foot home. They bought it for $19,000. You guys know this story. You know where I'm going with this. Um, and I think they, so, you know, they sold it some time back. Um, but a three-bedroom in Santa Clara, uh, their home, if you, look, if you look on Zillow or what have you, it's not 600,000, it's not 900,000, 1.2 million. Robert Aldana, you're a realtor, you, you know, from my Scotts Valley, who, who's here, he understands what I'm talking about because here we are, that's what's driving our, our, the, the housing costs up here. But I'm happy to say some of these smaller units that we've had um, on Scotts Valley Drive and the ones that are coming here, a lot of times they've been selling in the 600 to 700 to 850 range. That sounds like a lot, but when you compare it to what's out there on, you know, in Silicon Valley, it's a livable place. And we, we want to drive, the, in, a, in an organic way, drive down some of the cost of housing by apartments. People just being able to live. And so we have the Grove there, we have a, a, a behind uh, the Shell Station on Mount Herman. I think there are about 20 units going to go there. Across from the um, across from the, the, the new hotel that's being built, there's going to be about 30 or 35 uh, condominiums go. So it's housing. Um, you know, I think we're fortunate that from the and the next slide talks a little bit about our our ability to um, monitor our water usage. As you can see, reaching an apex back in the you know mid 1990s. Um, this community has responded. I think Fred, you know, to, to her credit, Dave Hodgins' credit, good leadership. Does it cost a little bit more in terms of, of what our water bills are? Yeah. yeah, it did this month, okay, and last month, okay. But at the same time, infrastructure is not cheap, okay. Um, and I'm happy to say that people have responded to a variety of programs. The city has uh, worked hard with the water district to kind of give credits. You know, when you replace that, and we did it in our household, you know, we had the old style, I think it's 3.5 gallons per flush, okay. I don't think we went to the 0.8, but it's like one gallon, okay. And so with a family of five and kids who don't really care about water conservation, um, you know, those, those things really, really help. And I think we're using probably, and help me, Fred, but about 30, 30 to 40% less than we did back then. That's huge. So it allows us, it shows a couple of things, that we have a responsive, responsible community that says, hey, we have to save a little bit here, and, and we did. Um, so, you know, I think that's, you know, if, the, if that represented our revenue, I'd be a little bit worried, but that's what I usage, so we're pretty good there. Uh, we're making investment in infrastructure. Um, we have improvements to uh, plan for um, Mount Hermon and Scotts Valley Drive. I think uh, it's going to involve uh, uh, just better management at, at that intersection, uh, a better left-hand turn coming uh, coming from the, the freeway to be able to turn left on Whispering Pines, uh, a little bit more capacity so you don't have to wait for those lights quite as, as long. Um, we have, uh, you know, we, I think we do a pretty good job in terms of slurry seals and, and you know, one of the real problems with roads, and you, you, we see it around here, is that if you let them deteriorate, okay, the cost of refurbishing them is hugely expensive. But if you, it's kind of like every maintenance thing, right? I mean, you have a great thing here because it seems like you're on top of your maintenance and you don't have to have those, you know, you know. did I say something wrong? <laughs> But in general, maintenance is a is a very good thing. So instead of instead of paying you know a dollar, you really pay about a, a, a ten cents or fifteen cents. Just to kind of keep things um, on the up and up as far as maintenance is, is concerned. And slurry seals are one of those nice things that you come in, you fill the cracks, you don't let a rain like last year completely destroy your roads, and um, that's where we are. So. 
So the greatest adventure is what lies ahead. And you, you remember as I talked today, when I started my talk, we always have to be cognizant of the past because those, was it Santiana who said, those who ignore the past are condemned to repeat it? You have to pay attention to the past. And I'm talking a little bit about the present right now, but I th what I'm really encouraged about is the future of our city. Uh, the future of our city really does look bright, and uh, a lot of it has to do with new leadership, a lot of it has to do, of course, though, with the commitment of our citizens who take pride in Scotts Valley, who are proud when they talk about and tell people where they're from. They say, I'm from a place called Scotts Valley. And I think everybody's had, I think everybody's had this experience. Um, where are you from? Scotts Valley. I, I've been to Scotts Valley. I love Scotts Valley. Okay? That is something that I'm proud of as, as a representative, your representative of the city, and I hope uh, towards the future that we can, we can maintain that and forever be able to say those words, I'm proud of our city, Scotts Valley. So, thank you. I hope I didn't go on too long. Thank you, Mayor. Yes, so, like, like you said, uh, if you recognize the name, yes, my dad was the chief of police here for many years. He retired back in 2001. I'm, I'm just just starting my, this is my first year here as chief of police. Uh, I came over from La, the, worked in Los Gettys for a number, almost 20 years, and I decided to come back home to Scotts Valley. This is where I was born and raised, and uh, where I've cho chosen to have my family be. It's, it's a great community. I'm just always a little bit disappointed by some of the old timers here when I started, who were, who were very uh, impressed by how well my, my dad had aged when he saw Steve Walpole as the chief of police. <laughs> and as much as a compliment to him, I'm thinking to myself, that guy's pushing 70, you really think it's me? I think that old? Like, come on, help me out here. So, it's, so it's some of the things that we're, that we're doing here uh, in Scotts Valley, uh, I took over the reins in January of this year, and uh, we were down four patrol officers out of an entire staff of 20. Uh, you know, so we're down 20%. The city of Scott, uh, Santa Cruz was down 20%. That'd be a major emergency, right? So that, that's where I started from, and, and it wasn't for anything, any particular reason. Just a, a lot, a lot of different forces came together through retirements and, and just a regular attrition. Uh, so. I knew, because I was born and raised here, that the city of Scotts Valley, the police department, had a, had a long tradition of hiring local people to serve on the force. And over the years, we've, we've kind of moved away from that. And uh, we've gone to different police academies all across the state and found some really good people. But those people ended up not staying because they wanted, eventually they wanted to go back home to wherever they were originally from. They were very good officers, but they didn't understand the, 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 the past history of Scotts Valley, they didn't understand what a special community that we are. So even though it took a lot longer, and, and we put a lot of resources into it, we decided to focus on the people who are, who are locally, locally homegrown people. So I'm, I'm glad to say after seven months now, seven months of really doing the, the hard lifting and, and really recruiting, we were able to fill all those positions with people who, who are from Scotts Valley, who understand the history of Scotts Valley, understand the, the community of Scotts Valley, understand where we want to go in the future. So I'm really glad about that. Uh, other than the full-time employees, the police department also has a long history of volunteerism. So we have police reserve officers who are essentially people who have full-time jobs doing something else other than law enforcement. And as a hobby, 
as a part-time experience. They, they, they don the uniform and look exactly like full-time officers that have the exact same training and they patrol typically on the weekends. Mm -hmm. And that, that is a hard thing to find people who want to do that because you know, they're giving up their weekends to, to go out and you know, keep the neighborhood safe when they could be you know, doing something, watching football. Um, and the training requirements are tough. Uh, because they have to do exactly the same thing that full-time police officers do now. So, in the old, in the old uh, way we were doing business, the state allowed us to bring on people to volunteer as reserve officers with less training. Or that, that's that's been long done away with about 15, 20 years ago. So, we when I started, we had three vol volunteer uh, reserve police officers. And we did a big push on that, and now we've got it in the back up to six. So we looked around to see what other organizations are doing. We found out that the city of Scotts Valley, we actually have the largest volunteer reserve police officer force in the, in the county of Santa Cruz and the county of Monterey. So with our six, we actually have the largest number of volunteer officers here. So you don't know it sometimes, you'll see them go on patrol because they, they wear, they have the same equipment, they have the same uniform. But sometimes the people you're looking at, those people are volunteering their time, they're just members of the community, just like you guys are. And, yeah, and also, to make sure that we have a good uh, system in place to, that where we have the young, young people in our community want to grow up and be police officers for Scotts Valley. Uh, three years ago, we implemented the Police Explorer Program, which is a program where we take teenagers typically in high school and we give them a light blue uniform, light blue uniform and when they, they assist us on patrol. They don't have a gun, which really upsets them because they don't have a gun. 15, 16 year old with guns. That's yeah, not going to happen. Uh, but they're going to get to see what, what law enforcement is really like and what it is to really like to be a police officer here for Scotts Valley. It's, it's not a run and gun uh, kind of situation we have here. We're mostly here to keep the peace and make sure that Scott Sally is safe, which is good for me because since I've lived here my whole life, I don't want I don't want a busy department. I want us to keep keep that criminal activity down low. Uh, so we've had really good success with that. We've typically we started out with five teens. Uh, those teens now have graduated and uh, moved on, mostly went to college. Uh, so we've constantly been recruiting with that, and now we have we have ten uh, police explorers in, in our in our team academy. So we. You'll see a lot of these young officers that really made, they're not actually officers, they're the explorers, uh, light blue uniform, and they're out there riding with our officers right now. And, and we're hoping that long term we're going to have some success with it. These people, these men and women, are going to want to come back and be police officers for, for our city. Uh, the things we're working on this year is, I probably read about the firearms ordinance that we've, that we've been doing. Uh, initially we started off with there was some concern in the community about how many fire, how many gun stores we we're having in our, in our town. Uh, we ended up putting a moratorium to see what, study that. Uh, we initially looked at maybe limiting where they could be in the city. That's, but uh, we we found right now that's going through the courts. Uh, different jurisdictions also tried to do that, and we're not sure that's going to be found to be legal or not. So we ended up backing away from that position and instead the city council said hey told told me as the chief just hey look what we want to make sure is these gun stores that are going to be here are going to be safe and that nothing's going to get stolen out of them uh, so we ended up passing a a resolution to give me as the chief police a little bit more leeway in telling the gun store owners uh, how how they're going to store their firearms and make sure they don't get stolen and then uh, the nice thing is the, the gun store owners that we have in our city, they were all supportive of that. They're like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Responsible gun store owners are going to want to have security cameras. They're going to want to make sure they uh, they have adequate locks, and they're going to. Nobody wants gun store owners or, or members of the public or the law enforcement. Nobody wants to see these firearms stolen. And it was excellent timing on our part. Uh, just in the last 45 days, there were three gun shops were burglarized in this county. With, with it, let's, let's, let's see here. September 28th, one got hit in Capitola, and October 4th, one got hit in Watsonville, and then uh, October 20th, one got hit in Santa Cruz. So the one gun store we have here at Perry is, is essentially the only one left in the county that hasn't gotten burglarized. 
So we reached out to him and uh, reviewed his security protocols. He, he has a great security program. Uh, we put his store on extra patrols and that made sure that he's on high alert because these burglaries are just happening by strangers. These are getting these people. These people are getting these businesses are getting cased first. So I told him, hey, if you see anybody suspicious in your store, give us a call and we'll check it out. So we're we're pretty confident that, that that's not going to occur here in Scotts Valley. Uh, the other thing we're working on this this year also is emergency preparedness. Uh, three three things: the, the, our emergency operations center. We're working with our fire department and we're working with our school district. Uh, we have an emergency operations center uh, here in Scotts Valley. It's, it's at the, our city council chambers. Uh, we train annually on what to, we're going to do if we open that open up the emergency operations center if there's an earthquake, a fire, or God forbid another uh, heavy rainstorm flood. Uh, and we were really good at doing that if the emergency operations center was open for two or three days. But as we saw with the fires up north, sometimes that's going to be open, that could be open for weeks. Uh, so this year we made a big push, instead of training our normally our core city employees, what we've done is really expanded that so pretty much almost any city employee can, can work in the emergency operations center. And so that's, they can continue to work 24, a day, 24 hours a day, seven days a week for, for a number of weeks in a row. We have our next training come up in just a couple of weeks here. Uh, where we're going to do a tabletop exercise and then hopefully uh, another one shortly after that we're going to bring in other jurisdictions. Uh, the other thing for emergency preparedness, like I said, is the fire department. Uh, the fire department we work with almost every day because of, we go to accidents and medical calls with them. Uh, so uh, Steve and I made sure that we try and collaborate with our training exercises. We just had a training exercise with the fire department. How Law enforcement and fire can best respond to fire incidents, especially residential fires. Because uh, that's not something that, that we do every day, but something they do every day. And it, it was a great training in terms of, here's what we expect from the law enforcement, and here's what you can do to help better support us when we have a, when we have a house fire. So we just, we just had, had that training just a couple weeks ago, and it was really successful. It was really great just to get some face time with the, the fire department side of the shop where we, we're not actually on a call. We can actually sit down and talk to each other and, and kind of review things that we've done in the past. And, and finally, for emergency pre preparedness, uh, we're working with our school district. Uh, we're working with our allied agencies in the county and other school districts to, to uh, formulate a, a county-wide county -wide, uh, I want to get the term right here. No, an intruder protocol. So, so we all respond the same way if, God forbid, there is a some kind of active shooter event in our schools. So, we all, all the school districts and all the different allied agencies had different ways that we would handle those kind of situations. And uh, we all said, hey, you know what? That's if something was to happen in Santa Cruz or something was to happen in Watsonville, and we have a Santa or a Scotts Valley officer going out there to help out. We all really need to be on the same page. So we're currently working with them to get that done. We're hoping to have that done by the beginning of uh, next year. So that, and then we're gonna do a training exercise on top of that. So everyone for sure knows how to do that. Uh, and then finally, just internally for Scotts Valley, we're, we're working on uh, getting body cameras. Uh, it's really becoming an industry standard. Uh, we haven't, we were not an early adopter for body cameras because quite, quite frankly, we're really blessed that we, we have a lot of support from our community and we have very, very few uses of, uses of force and very few uh, citizen complaints. Uh, it was something I was really taken back by when I came to this organization about three years ago. And I looked to see, okay, we, let me see all of the complaints and let me see all the use of forces we've had in the last five years. And they gave me a list of like, that long, it was like three. Like, wow, that's, that's great. <laughs> but you know, it, it's really something, body cameras are something that's really, deep, is, everyone in the community has kind of come to expect that we would have something like that in place. Uh, so we're moving forward with that. I'm gonna have, there will be some kind of outreach, uh, community outreach very soon. Uh, I will let you guys know, we're gonna put it on social media from everybody, yeah, including members of the community. So look for that very soon. We'll, we'll be uh, putting something out probably next month. Yeah. 
And then in January, we're going to go to the city council, we'll ask for their input. And then hopefully uh, May, July, May, June, we will have it, something purchased and uh, you'll see our officers out there with the body cameras. It'll be, it'll, be, uh, it'll be good to see, uh, you know. It, and we have a social media out, outreach program, so, you know, be good to maybe put some of those those calls for service that that we are dealing with in out there, so you can see. Okay, this is what Scotts Valley officers have to deal with sometimes on a daily basis. I think that's about it. Most of my time got used up. I don't know by who. I don't want to twenty fingers. So I'm gonna let you go. And uh, I'll fire Chief Steve for the next. Myself, uh, I've hit thirty six years in the fire service uh, this year, and. Uh, been, this is my fourth agency that I've uh, been able to go through my 36 years uh, to, be, to gain the experience uh, to be here. So I'm extremely happy to be here. It's a great community. I knew that before I came here. It's been just reinforced again by being here. So the Scotts Valley Fire District, we are a fire protection district. Uh, we aren't part of the city, as, as Randy had mentioned. Uh, so we're funded through property tax, uh, and then we have some fees for service uh, as well. But that's, uh, we're governed by a, a five-member board of directors, which is elected by the voters that are within the, the fire district boundaries. We cover about 22 square miles. Uh, we have two fire stations that are staffed uh, each day, and our daily staffing is eight people there. So, and we run about 2,200 calls for service each year, each calendar year. So, we're not the busiest in the county. Uh, as far as call volume goes, but uh, that's you know that's a few calls a day. So we also, through a contract for services, we administer the rents of 40 fire protection district uh, on the other side of, of Scotts Valley here. So I've uh, been doing that for about two years now as well. Uh, so a few things that we've got going on. Uh, we are initiating a facility study. Uh, the station that we're in was built in the 60s, uh, and it was added on to a couple of times through the years. And uh, we, we outgrew it a long time ago, but because of the economic downturn uh, that happened, we, we just weren't able to do anything with it. So right now we've got a facility study going on, and the results of that will tell us whether we need to stay there, completely remodel that one, uh, bring it up to you know earthquake standards and, and uh, make it uh, more usable for us, or if we need to go to a whole another uh, facility and, and build from scratch. So. That will be done uh, probably May or June is when that study will be uh, completed. So we're also going to be uh, working on improving our, our community outreach. Uh, we have a new website that will be unveiled in a couple of months. Uh, and we're, we're getting more active on our, our Facebook page uh, as well. Uh, a lot of that wasn't uh, before I got here. It, it kind of tapered off. Uh, so uh, we're doing that. Uh, we have available uh, CPR training. That, that our folks can do uh, for the community. And we just finished up this month with our, uh, it was Fire Prevention Month, and we went to the schools and we reached out to 662 kids uh, this year through public education. So they're teaching them about fire safety and all those types of things. So very well received. They love it when they come in the classroom uh, as well. So.